All right, welcome back. We are going to now talk about some um, pretty universal challenges faced in trying to manage projects in the emergency management context. Yeah, so let's start by considering uh, some of these. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is that, you know, in a disaster situation or uh, uh, an emergency management incident, um, there's generally little or no time to prepare uh, for that event, um, which makes it obviously hard to you know, build a team and develop a schedule and manage uh, budget and so forth to complete the work. So um, you're starting out in a really uh, challenging position right from the beginning. Yeah, and obviously disasters will happen with little to no warning and a lot of projects in support of the response to the disaster are in support of the disaster. So a lot of um, work is initiated and uh, deliverables are due, you know, with less than 24 hours uh, notice. So um, absolutely big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, this is true of, of so many kinds of incidents, whether it's a natural hazard, uh, like a wildfire or a hurricane or something, but, but it could also be true, you know, if you're working in, you know, a city government, a public safety office or something like that. So, um, you know, these are, these are challenges that exist across uh, this, this space. So another one is uh, not only uh, do these events uh, come uh, upon us quickly? Uh, they often change uh, in, in, in the middle of the event. So the conditions change. Uh, perhaps the, the area of, of interest or focus uh, changes. So for example, one area may uh, get flooded heavily. Um, another area may have a problem with a particular uh, community lifeline like communications or something like that that we saw in um, Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. So, uh, you know, with, with all this changing that's going on, um, that, that adds the complexity to um, what a project manager needs to be focused on in, in order to complete uh, the work. All right. Uh, the next uh, challenge that we identified was uh, often in emergency management uh, projects, there are, are groups of, of disparate, um, often complex and loosely formed uh, project teams uh, made up of uh, members from uh, perhaps different parts of a single organization, and then often uh, members from a, a number of other organizations who are quickly put together uh, and have to, have to work together uh, throughout the, the course of the incident. And this can be a challenge, of course, because um, these are potentially people you don't know. Um, you have to uh, meet and kind of go through the, the, uh, the process to um, figure out uh, protocols and, and workflows and, and tools and communication procedures and priorities. Uh, so um, this, this image here shows a pretty typical emergency management kind of of a workplace where with these different colors, um, there are, are members from, from different teams, uh, could be different organizations, or they're focused on a specific uh, kind of uh, community lifeline or, or concern. Yeah, and another thing that's a challenge when you're bringing together, you know, cross agency or um, cross organization teams really quickly in support of a disaster, a lot of times everyone's coming at the same problem with a different um, access to different data and different systems and different um, networks that they're working through. And so there's definitely a technological challenge associated with everyone trying to kind of pull together and, and organize. Yeah, yeah. And of course, um, there's great benefits to that too, right? So, you, you know, it's necessary to have interdisciplinary teams working together to solve all the, the variety of, of problems that come up in a, in a disaster. Um, but uh, that, that also presents challenges. So the next uh, challenge that's quite common is a diminished ability to communicate during an incident. And this could be due to any number 
of reasons. Uh, you know, again, thinking about uh, uh, Hurricane Maria in, in Puerto Rico, uh, much of the communications equipment, uh, towers, uh, transmission lines, and so forth uh, uh, were damaged uh, during that hurricane and, and caused um, real problems in terms of communication. So that's, that's one example. Uh, another might be where um, some of your team members are, are deployed or out in the field uh, or are out of uh, cell range or something like that or aren't online, you know, in email and, and chat the way you're used to, uh, which, which can just make, um, you know, communicating with your, your team members uh, all, all the harder. Yeah, and especially in the field, a lot of times you don't have um, internet access. So trying to pre-download everything that you need for the day. Um, and then sometimes lack of ability to send real-time information back to your team while you're in the field can be a challenge as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you can see some of the equipment here that, that uh, these folks have stood up in the field to, to help with that. that. That's pretty common. and. <clears throat> Certainly in our work with, with FEMA uh, at, the, at the joint field offices and other places, uh, we're involved in, in delivering uh, servers and, and laptops that are configured for GIS personnel to access data and software to do their work. Okay, um, so one of, the, one of the other big challenges is uh, the changing requirements. So not only can conditions uh, be changing uh, in terms of what, what focus, uh, what lifeline uh, is of interest at a particular time, but, but the kinds of um, deliverables that uh, you're being asked to complete may change too. So, you know, one of the examples, you know, I've thought of is, you know, it, it may be, you know, the first request is, hey, we need a, we need a map, simply a map, a PDF or, or an image or something of, you know, this area, you know, showing the, you know, the wind speed and the population, something like that. And then, you know, perhaps even just, just hours later, that evolves into actually, no, we need, we need a, a data service, a streaming data service or an API of that information so that our our uh, interagency partners can can consume that information and, and put it into this dashboard or something. And then that evolves into actually we need you to build an entire dashboard and we need to add you know information about uh, you know critical infrastructure or or transportation and uh, evacuation routes or something. So you know we went from, you know, simply just a PDF to now a fully deployed web application uh, over the course of, you know, hours or days. And, um, you know, these are very different projects, each one of those. Um, and so that evolving nature and, uh, and changing requirements uh, can be a real challenge uh, for project managers. You know, along with those changes, uh, the same is true with, with resources. Um, this could be, you know, uh, 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 team members, um, tools, um, data, uh, and even funding. So, you know, all, all this stuff can uh, change over the course of an event. Um, you know, for example, um, you may, may lose team members to, to the field uh, who normally are available to do something in the office or, you know, funds uh, are unknown if, if disaster uh, relief funds are, are going to come and be able to, to pay for part of the project. Uh, often that's not known until uh, sometime in the middle of the project. Uh, those kinds of uh, un uncertainties uh, with, in terms of resources. Uh, is another area of challenge, I think, for project managers. All right, and so next up, uh, we're gonna look at uh, project management in, in more detail and, and how we can overcome uh, some of these challenges. Yeah, and we'll, we'll cover some basics to make sure we're all coming at this from you know, common knowledge. Um, if you're new with project management, we'll, we'll cover some basic terminology and 
um, as well as some tools that are really useful. So it'll be great.